Hi, my name is Becky Norton. I'm from Two Bees Cookies here in Houston, Texas. Thank you for having me today with Icing Images Live. Uh, today I'm going to be discussing with you how to achieve this beautifully embossed cookie utilizing Icing Images products and a technique I like to call the high resolution embossing technique. You too can achieve this beautiful outcome with just a few short steps. And I'm gonna walk you through those today. And as you can see, you're gonna get lots of definition and movement on your cookies. You can also utilize this technique on your cakes as well. Okay, so let's get started. First, let me introduce to you some of the products that I've been utilizing in this technique. And the first one is our double density wafer paper that I get from Icing Images. Uh, double density wafer paper is just the level of thickness. It's two times the thickness of regular wafer paper. And I have found that this actually works better with this technique when I'm doing die cuts. And I'm gonna show you die cuts as well during this video, okay? And our star of this production is our Icing Images Smart Sheets, okay? So Smart Sheets is actually a cornstarch based product. It's all edible, smells wonderful, gives you great flexibility. The Smart Sheet has two different sides. It has a smooth side and a textured side. I'll be utilizing the textured side in our embossing. However, that smooth side, if you're printing off with your edible image printer, it's gonna give you a high definition look. Okay, uh, these sheets are also stable if you wanna start your cookie process prior to doing this. You can actually adhere your smart sheets to your royal icing on your cookie and put those in the freezer and it remains stable, okay? And then a couple of the other products that you'll be seeing during the video is of course our uh, paper potion that I utilize also from uh, icing images. And this is gonna texturize and, or not texturize, but condition your papers to give you a workable product, okay? And it takes very little of the paper potion to achieve what we're gonna be achieving today. Uh, the paper potion, again, is available from Icing Images, and it has a wonderful vanilla scent, and again, it is 100% edible, okay? And then I also utilize Little Honey's Glue, which I get from Icing Images as well. And you're gonna see me utilizing this glue to actually be putting our die cuts together in a simple one, two, three process. Okay? The first thing we need to do is condition our paper. So I take a smart sheet, and again, you have a textured side and a smooth side, and I take the wafer paper conditioner, the paper potion, and I actually, and I'm not gonna spray this under the camera because I don't want to get this all over my equipment, but you simply take your spray bottle, hold it about eight to 10 inches away from your paper and do two to three spritz across the entire sheet. Flip your paper over and do the same thing on the back and then set that aside. Get your wafer paper sheet and do the same thing and set it aside. You want to give that about two to three minutes of conditioning time before you actually start running the products through your embossing and die cutting machine. Today, I'm using the Sizzix embosser and this is the Big Shot. It's readily available from numerous craft stores across the country, uh, such as Hobby Lobby, Michaels, you can get them on Amazon, um, so just be, be looking for those and they go on sale quite often, okay? With that machine, you're gonna be getting the platform sheets so that you can utilize the embossing folders and the die cuts, okay? So this comes with the machine. This is a standard platform and an acrylic sheet and these are called sandwiching. I'm gonna be utilizing an embossing folder Okay, and I like to use the 3D texture folders just to give me an added dimension. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what these look like if you're not familiar with what an embossing folder is. 
it truly is just a folder, just like a little notebook that you use in school, okay? So it has some high definition texturing in there and it's gonna sandwich your product in between. We're gonna run it through the embossing machine and it's going to put enough pressure to leave that impression on your smart sheet, okay? And so I simply load up a smart sheet and you can cut them to the size that you want according to what type of cookie that you're making. Okay, so this is the higher resolution side because your impression is going to be pushed into those groups. So again, I take the smart sheet on the textured side, lay it into the folder, close the folder, and I'm gonna load it into the machine, okay? I put the open side closest to the roller and the pressure area, put the plastic or acrylic sheet on top, and simply run it through. And it literally takes one time to run through. It's very easy to operate this machine. There's no electricity needed. Now you may ask, well, why should I use this instead of a Cricut? Because this is gonna really give you more embossing texture in a short amount of time for the amount of projects that you're wanting to do. Now, I wanna show you what this sheet looks like once it comes out of this folder. Okay, all right. So now you can see all that beautiful texture that now you can work with, and this is gonna be added to your cookie. And you can either leave these the color that they are, or you can airbrush or dry dust them, and I'm gonna be dry dusting these today, okay? So, and again, let's go through how you do the die cuts. Now, with your machine, again, you get the standard plate. You can opt to buy an additional plate, which is a magnetic plate, but you certainly do not have to do that. I have a die cut, which comes in packages like this, and you can get a multitude of different types of products. Whatever your theme is, you can find a die cut, and you can find an embossing folder to, to meet your needs. Today I've selected the dragonfly out of this group, okay? And when I take it out of that package, it looks like this, okay? So a simple one piece, but it's gonna cut out certain areas of the wafer paper, and it's going to emboss in other areas of the paper. So I simply take my die cut, lay it onto the sheet, or the, the platform, and then I'm gonna take my wafer paper and lay on top of that. And you wanna make sure that it covers your entire die. And then I'm gonna cover that again with another one of the acrylic sheets. And I'm simply, again, gonna run that through, right? Okay, and then whenever I finish with that, I take that cover sheet off. And then I'm gonna be left with the pieces that look like this to work with, okay? All right, so the reason that I chose the double density wafer paper, and I'm gonna show you now why. This is a double density, and this is the body of the dragonfly and part of his wings. This is double. This one is the regular wafer paper density. It's much more fragile, so I have to be really careful when I am working with this piece or I will tear parts off of it. You can certainly use it if this is what you have. Just know that you have to be a little bit more careful so that you don't cause any tears. All right, so let me put my little dragonflies here in front of me, and I'm gonna show you how I achieve going from this to again this, okay? And you can see the colors and you can get as creative and detailed as you want or as simple as you want. It's all up to you. All right, so one of the ways that I do this is I take my sheet that I've cut out with a die cut and I'm going to be dry dusting mine. And let me see what color I'd like to use on this one. And again, it's totally up to you what you wanna use. I think we'll use the Nicholas Lodge on Dina Rose for this one. And I simply 
take a little bit of his powder. And if the powder color is too strong for you, you can actually mix some of your powder with cornstarch to tone it down. That way you're gonna be using less of your product. Okay, so it's gonna go farther and it's gonna give you different tones. Say if you only have five or 10 dusting powders, by adding the cornstarch at different levels, you're gonna achieve different shades, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna be putting a small amount of cornstarch because I really love this color. And I utilize some uh, brushes that I discovered that's actually for scrapbooking embossing. But uh, you buy these on Amazon and they come in a set of different colored handles so that you can use the color handle with the color dusting powder that you're using and you're never cross contaminating your colors. So it's not gonna interfere with what you're trying to achieve, okay? And so since this has a purple base to it, I'm gonna use my little purple brush. It has very fine velvety uh, bristles in this. You never use anything designated for your cookies or cakes other than what you've designated for food products. Yes, this is in the crafting section, but it was purchased new and dedicated for food products. Now let me show you how easy it is to achieve a color on this wafer paper, okay? So I simply rub the dusting powder onto the wafer paper, depending on, again, what colors you want, and simply add until I achieve the color that I'm looking for, okay? And that's what I want in the background of his wings on this one. And as you can tell on this one, I went with more of um, bronzy colors and teal colors. And again, you can, whatever you have, utilize it, see what it's gonna look like, okay? Now, I'm finished with that purple color for now, so I wanna put up that brush so that I don't cross contaminate. Now, if you're wanting to airbrush at this point, you certainly can. The only thing to remember is when you're airbrushing lightweight things like wafer paper, you're gonna have to make sure that you secure it down so that it's not flying around everywhere, okay? So let me just show you really quickly how easy it is to achieve coloration with your airbrushing technique as well, okay? So I'm gonna hold it down. I don't want him flying off. And I simply add the color where I want it. And as much as I want, and again, this is double density paper, so it can withstand your airbrushing. And when you're not pulling back on your trigger, releasing color, remember it's just blowing air. So it's helping to dry that as well, okay? So first piece is done. Now let's focus on his internal section of his body. And let's just go ahead and airbrush that too, since I've got this out. And again, you can achieve variations in color whatever you want. So we made his body a little bit darker, okay? And then we have his beautiful wings, but I want those wings to really stand out with shine. So I'm gonna be using a different color on his wings to give him a little pop, okay? So let me get this color out of the way. And on this section, I'm actually gonna be using the Sugar Art Sterling Pearl Oyster. And it has a little bit of a green tint to it, but high brilliance, okay? And so since this has a little bit of the green tint, I'm gonna go again with a green brush so that I don't cross contaminate anything, okay? And again, I'm just going to pick up some of that dusting powder, okay? I'm gonna put my wing on there. Dust it onto the wing. 
and he's done. Okay, now at this point, what I would do is take my Little Honey's glue and I'm going to put those three pieces together so that I can add them to my cookie at the end. With the Little Honey's glue, make sure that you remember less is more. Just a little bit goes a long way. So I'm gonna add a drop, connect my pieces, hold it in place for just a second. Okay, then I can come back and add another drop of glue in a couple of places to secure those wings. Okay. Hold it down, let it set up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna set him off to the side to add him at the end, okay? Now, how do we achieve that textured look onto the cookie? Well, we're gonna take a naked cookie. We're going to be adding royal icing at a little bit thicker consistency than flood. And then attaching that smart sheet. Okay, so here is a cookie that we're going to be utilizing. Let me clean this off just a little so none of it gets on our smart sheet until I get the colors that I want, okay? All right, so here's my cookie. Again, it's a little bit thicker than regular flood. And I'm simply just going to flood this cookie fast and easy. I don't have to worry about what does my edges look like? What does my flooding look like? I only had to do white. I didn't have to mix colors. So again, it's a quick process for you to achieve some beautiful looks that looks like it took you a long time to do. Okay, so I just get that on there. And then I'm gonna take my smart sheet that I embossed earlier, okay? And you can do one of two things. You can cut it to size before you flood your cookie, or you can simply lay this on your cookie now, and you're going to pat it down and secure it to that royal icing. And I wanna make sure that that royal icing is getting into all those grooves on that texture. And I'm coming out to the edge of the cookie with that royal icing so that it is all secure, okay? And as you can see, I'm not being extremely gentle with it. I just wanna make sure that I'm not pulling it and causing any cracks in the sheet. However, if you do get some, it's okay because that icing is going to go up into those grooves and it's gonna help secure that piece. So don't throw your scraps away for your smart sheets just because they have a little crack in them. Use them, okay? Now, on this cookie, I've actually selected to cover the entire cookie with the smart sheet. You can do half cookies, you can do the diagonal cut. Now, and I'm just gonna set this aside just like this, or I can trim it now, and then really trim it down after it's dry to make sure that my edges are nice and crisp, okay? The secret right here is to make sure, again, that you're checking to see is your icing all the way to the edge. And then I'm simply going to set this off to the side, maybe under a fan or in an area where the air is gonna be flowing by, and allow this to dry for about 24 hours, at least overnight. The difference between this and using parchment paper is now I am done with this part. I don't have to worry about Am I gonna have holes in there? Is it going to adhere good? What's it gonna look like when I pull off this piece? Because we're not gonna pull this off. This stays and leaves all of that beautiful texture right there. So then I can work with that texture after it's been on there for 24 hours, okay? So you could make these well in advance and then work on them the day of the cookies delivery or whatever your deadline is. And so that gives you an opportunity to take more time doing other things while these dry. Now I've been asked, can you put these in the dehydrator? Yes, you can, but I don't think you get as good a result because it's gonna dry out the edges of your smart sheet a little bit. 
but it's you certainly could do it. So if I left the edges on here a little longer and then I trim that up either with an X-Acto or um, the file, then I can, I can make those look absolutely perfect, okay? Or you can go with a more rustic look and tear off those edges and it's gonna give you a totally different look. So again, I'm gonna set this to the side. And of course now, with the magic of recording, I can show you what one looks like that is fully dry, okay? And again, I achieved all of that texture onto this cookie and it's maintained. So then all I have left to do is decide what color do I want this beautiful thing to be? and how much color do I want, and then what are my embellishments, okay? All right, so again, that process is the same as what we did on the dragonfly. I gotta decide what color do I want in this background, and I'm actually gonna go with dogwood, which is also from the Sugar Art, and this is an elite color. Now, this doesn't have any brilliance or sparkle to it at this point. It's a matte finish, okay? but I want to get into those grooves and really bring up that dimension. So I take a little bit of that powder. And again, this is a brown base. So I'm gonna take my brown brush, okay? I'm gonna make sure that I wipe it off a little bit. I'm gonna tap it into that color. And as you can see, it's on my brush good, right? And you wanna start lightly, okay? And leave some of that color behind. It's gonna pick up and highlight those areas that are raised. I can get in those cracks and add some more if I want to, but I'm actually good with what that looks like right there, okay? Now, I could add sparkle to it I can go back and I can highlight uh, with some of the metallic colors, whatever it is that you want to achieve on your cookie. You can do that, okay? But we're gonna leave it in this beautiful rustic look, but very elegant. And this is gonna look fabulous with our dragonfly attached, okay? So then we take our dragonfly. We look to see where do we want that baby positioned? Do I like it there? Do I like it here? And again, that's totally up to you. And then once I decide where I want it, then I'm going to take, again, the little honey's glue, and I'm just gonna put a couple of little dots here and there, and then add him to the cookie, and allow that to dry, okay? And that takes several minutes for that to adhere. And then you come up with your final product looking like this. So not too bad, easy to achieve. And again, this cookie, of course, was half smart sheet, half royal icing. And on the royal icing, again, I just dry dusted the white so that it would be a complementary color to the smart sheet color that I selected, okay? Now, you can do this, again, with a number of different embossing folders. There are literally hundreds available for you to select from. Just do a little researching, look at them. But what, you're wanna, what you wanna make sure is that you're getting one that's gonna fit the machine that you have purchased. Most of them come in a standard five by seven size. So they're gonna easily fit, and it'll say on the back of the product that you're looking at, if it's compatible with the machine that you have selected. Now, if you go with the Spellbinder Excalibur version of the embossing machine, that allows you to get a wider embossing plate in there. So if you're doing cakes, that might be an option for you. And Icing Images sells a line of embossing plates as well in folders for cakes and cookies, and they're called M Possibilities. They are food grade material. They have a wide variety of selection on there. So take a look at what they have available as well. Um, you can reuse these over and over and over again. As long as you take care of them, they're gonna last you a long, long time. 
Um, average cost of these is anywhere from $2.50 to $10, $12 a piece. But you can get multiple looks from the same plate. I may select to do just the, the corner and get one look, or I could go with the center of this highly detailed section. And as you can see on this piece of the smart sheet, you're gonna maintain that lace look in your cookie, okay? So don't be afraid to try different things to achieve different looks, just as I've done on this cookie as well. Okay, I used an embossing plate that was a fall theme with the falling leaves. This is royal icing just highlighted with the dusting powders. And then I attached a die cut bow. And again, this is out of wafer paper and a leaf that I cut out with a die cut and then highlighted as well. Okay, and then the twig on this one, I actually made with smart sheet scraps and condition that with the paper potion into a clay so that I could manipulate it into a little twig and I embedded it when the royal icing was wet, okay? So again, don't throw away your scraps, save all of your scraps and utilize those things, okay? So let me raise that up so you can see the detail on that one, okay? And as you can see, the wafer paper looks absolutely amazing on your cookies. Now, some of the questions that I've had is, can you package these cookies? Yes, you can. The wafer paper after it's been conditioned is actually very flexible. And you can see I'm mashing that down completely flat. When I take it out of that packaging, it's going to start reabsorbing some humidity that's in the air. And then you're gonna get that nice movement, okay? So again, don't be afraid to try new techniques. This one I tore off manually on the edges because I wanted that more rustic detail, okay? And then I'm gonna show you a couple of others. This cookie has the wood grain embossing folder on the smart sheet. And so it gives me the wood plank look. And then I simply airbrushed that after the 24 hours of dry time and did a little bit of the dry dusting with a pearl color. And then I went back and used semi-isomalt to add some details. And this is semi-isomalt clear for the window. And then I painted the skull after I did an impression on the back with semi-white. Okay, and I used uh, the Zioto pen, which is also available on icing images, to add some little etchings in the glass to give it a little bit more spooky look, okay? And then this one is also a smart sheet with an embossing folder that's geared towards Halloween. And there's no way that you could get this type of detail and dimension on your cookie with just royal icing or just a parchment sheet that you have embossed. So the smart sheet is going to up your level and up your game on your dimensions on your cookies, okay? So again, the star of my show today, which I absolutely love and love to play around and experiment with, is the smart sheet. The smart sheet is available again from Icing Images. Uh, it has no taste, and again, it's a cornstarch-based product. It's stable in the refrigerator and freezer, and you can get multiple, multiple uses from a smart sheet. If you are printing with your edible image printer, you can print on the smart sheets and then emboss and all of that dry dusting and stuff is already taken care of because, because you print it on it with your food safe image printer, okay? All right, so that's all that I have for you today. I've enjoyed visiting with you and showing you my technique that I absolutely love. So be looking for more tutorials from Two Bees Cookies.